In step 5 of an SEM analysis using Warp PLS, I will perform the SEM analysis. The software will run the analysis and will show me this uh, weight bar progressing to the right. Uh, it also allows me to stop the analysis if it is taking too long. Typically when one includes moderating effects, um, the analysis takes a little bit longer than normal. Okay, this model tells me that there are significant effects between FE and FE, but not between ECU and FE or ECU and FE, if you consider the threshold for significance being the, the P lower than 0.05 level. Let's take a look at some of the outputs generated by the software. You can see general results, which essentially are general results of your analysis, of importance here are the model fit indices and related p-values. Uh, the software uh, outputs uh, three model fit indices. In this case, they are all good. The software also shows path coefficients and respective p-values. And it does so even for interaction effects. This is the moderating effect in the analysis, where you have ECU pointing at uh, the link between FE and FE, this is represented here as ECU showing first and then an asterisk uh, indicating a product with FE which is the uh, predictor variable in this particular relationship. Uh, software also shows standard errors for path coefficients that can be used for more advanced analysis such as analysis of mediating effects Software shows combined loadings and cross loadings. In the combined loadings and cross loadings uh, table, what you see are essentially um, the uh, loadings from a structure matrix. They are unrotated and they are shown within parentheses. And the cross loadings from a pattern matrix outside parentheses. Uh, the p-values refer to only to reflective uh, latent variables and they also cover interaction latent variables. And in this particular case, uh, the p-values are essentially telling me that the interaction latent variable um, does not seem to be uh, uh, passing uh, confirmatory factor analysis. This can happen with uh, interaction effects that involve formative latent variables, which is the case here. So one suggestion here is to avoid including formative latent variables in interaction effects because loadings will probably not be significant. Uh, you also see pattern loadings and cross loadings here, which are rotated, and the rotation is an oblique rotation. Uh, structural loadings and cross loadings, which are the bivariate correlations between the indicators and the latent variables, they are unrotated. Indicator weights, <coughs> these are shown for all variables, <coughs> including interaction variables. <coughs> And p-values and VIFs are shown for the indicators only of formative variables. Typically, you want to see p-values that are lower than 0.05, that is significant. And as you can see, these two don't pass this criterion. In VIFs, you want to see them relatively low. From a practical perspective, I would recommend lower than 2.5. Uh, the literature would suggest that lower than, point, uh, than 5 uh, would be okay. Um, if they are higher than 0.5, what this essentially means is that you have some indicators for formative latent variables that are redundant with each other, and uh, you don't want to see that in formative latent variable measurement. In formative latent variable measurement, you don't want the indicators to be redundant. In reflective measurement, you do want them to be redundant. This is why the VIFs are shown only for uh, 
informative latent variables. I can also see latent variable coefficients, uh, particularly important here, composite reliability coefficients. Um, I can see correlations among latent variables, and on this screen, on the diagonal, you see the square roots of the average variances extracted for each latent variable, which allow you to do a test of discriminant validity. You also see variance inflation factors for the latent variables in the model, and these are for uh, latent variables that point at other latent variables, including interaction latent variables. Uh, here, you don't want uh, VIFs to be higher than 5. Uh, if that's the case, that may indicate that two latent variables that are pointing at other latent variable, uh, which could we, call, uh, we would call predictor latent variables, are redundant. Uh, you can see correlations among indicators. And finally, you can uh, view and plot and save um, the, the plots between latent variables. All you have to do is to click on one of these, and then you see the plot. You can also save this plot into a JPEG file for inclusion in reports. In the case of in moderating effects, you see two plots when you click on it. Those plots are for low values of the moderating uh, variable, like in this case low ECU, and high values, high ECU. Uh, essentially, if the uh, relationships, the associations are significantly different, particularly in their overall strength uh, between high and low, you would see a significant effect, moderating effect, uh, on the graph. In this case, it's not significant. This concludes this demo for step 5.